The U.S. reporting more than 1.3 million COVID cases alone yesterday, breaking the record for the most cases reported nationwide in just one day. The U.S. also broke a record with the highest number of people in the hospital fighting COVID. So why is this Omicron variant spreading so rapidly across the country? Now is when we bring in world-renowned virology expert Dr. Larry Corey with the Fred Hutch. Uh, doctor, thanks for being with us this morning. Two years ago, almost to the day, the CDC reported on its website something about a novel coronavirus that it's found. It feels worse than ever today because of this Omicron variant. Why is it spreading so quickly? What are you finding? Well, we have in this variant <clears throat> a really marked change uh, in the virus that it's really able to, to infect the nose better than the other variants. Good news is it doesn't appear to infect the lung that much. So we have a lot of people who are asymptomatic carriers of the virus and doing it in enough of a titer in their nose so that they're unwittingly transmitting it to others. Yeah, we're looking at this video actually of uh, two Petri dishes with lung cells, Dr. Corey, one with Omicron, which shows a lot of uh, uh, healthy lung cells versus the former variants. Um, yeah. It seems like we all know at this point someone who has COVID. Yeah. Um, it used to be a little bit more rare before, but these breakthrough infections seem to be the new normal. Even people who are really careful are now getting sick. So what does this mean with the increase in the number of people now getting COVID? What does this mean on immunity and the impact it has on the pandemic? Well, the virus certainly has acquired mutations against resistant to past infection. Um, and enough, sometimes even with two vaccines, um, we're getting infections. Certainly with the third vaccine, we are getting titers up to where we think um, we will be in the past, where we have been in the past against the, what we call the ancestral strain. So boosting really does make a difference. Um, it is very clear also from the studies in uh, South Africa and now in England that the virus has a lot more cases, but the hospitalization to case ratio is lower. Still, we're seeing in our hospitals why we're, our hospitals are filling up are large numbers of unvaccinated people. That is still what's going on in the hospitals. Yes, it's Omicron, but it's people who are unvaccinated to Omicron. So how important is it that you say boosters make a big difference? How important is it then to possibly seek out a fourth shot to protect ourselves and this Omicron vaccine potential? What do you think about that? Well, there's a lot of work going on now. Um, and the work now is um, we're starting to uh, starting some studies with Omicron vaccine uh, versus ancestral strain. Is it better to have a fourth boost with an ancestral strain or an Omicron strain? And that is the work that the scientific community is, is doing it as fast as it can at the moment. So specifically, Dr. Corey, I'm thinking about someone like my mom, who is over the age of 65. She got her third dose, her booster, in September. Now it's, you know, we're getting close to about the six-month mark. Is she still protected at this point as we're still dealing with this Omicron surge? Reality is your mom's just like me at the moment. Uh, and I would say that our immunity is sort of going down. Um, we are susceptible. So um, I'm in increasing my vigilance about being indoors and uh, with large crowds. But I am confident that my immunity from the three doses will prevent me from getting severe illness. And, that, and the data really do show that. The Biden administration uh, being told by its advisors, maybe perhaps it's time that we start shifting the tone, the messaging to talk about living with this virus now instead of getting rid of the virus. What are your thoughts on that? Are we living with COVID-19 forever now? I do think we're gonna be living uh, with COVID-19 for many, many years, uh, I'll say at least five, six, seven, eight years. And I think the reality is, is that as we increase the, the, the kinds of, of boosters that we get, and maybe we will develop second generation vaccines also, but also having the new pills to take for therapy. Mm. Um, when we get that uh, out in distribution and get that manufactured, which uh, I think will be at the end of March and April, um, then we will have treatment as well as prevention. And I think uh, we do have the medical tools to handle this. The virus is not gonna go away. It still will circulate throughout the world. It is amazing to even me, who has been studying this, how this can come from South Africa to the United States in such sort of rapidity, 
mm -hmm. um, uh, over a you know two month period of time, or actually less than a month period of time. So it is formidable with respect to its transmissibility. It seems like the cases in South Africa have gone on the decline now. So the peak happened and and rather quickly actually. Yeah. So hopefully that bodes well for us. Not happening here, here yet. In the US. That's for sure. Yeah, Dr. Corey. Well, we have we have um, larger geography. <clears throat> maybe less crowding. True. So I'm mm -hmm. not sure we're going to end this as quickly as South Africa will end it, but we will have the tools to handle it. And if people do get vaccinated, we will keep people out of the hospital. Um, and the illness is milder. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's yeah. what we're seeing for sure. Still kind of a scary time, honestly, for a lot of folks. Dr. Corey, thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate your insight. We'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you.